do greater than say a good idea executed well is infinitely more valuable than a great idea that never saw light of day hard work is the only hack is one of those that we are we are the kind of people who actually don't believe in hacks the whole truth matters you cannot build a brand called the whole truth externally if you are not the whole truth internally let's say you end up with two types of people one where performance is lower but great culture fit yeah and another person who is very high performance but not a culture fit we'd rather let go of three good candidates than get one incorrect culture fit in if i feel that potential is not getting unleashed at the collective level because of some friction then no matter how beneficial that friction point is it has to go Hi everyone I'm super happy to be here I have Shashank Mehta uh, he unless you've been hiding under a rock he needs no intro he's the founder of the whole truth one of my favorite founders to just hang out with and uh, I'm glad that he's here uh, whole truth is a food brand and uh, that aims to build the world rebuild the world's trust in food and we have a podcast before on Shashank's founder journey so if you haven't uh, seen that please go check that out and then come back to this This particular podcast, Shashank and I were just uh, having a cup of coffee, and as usual, you know, we sat down for one hour. It ended up being three hours, and of that one hour, we talked about two topics, which was culture and community. And we just thought that some of what we talked about should be a podcast, and so here we are. Awesome. Thank you, Shashank. Thank you so much for having me, and I love spending time with you off VC and startup topics as much as possible. And I hope we keep it as informal as possible today. Thank you so much for having me. So, biggest change in your life since the last time you were on the pod is baby Nandita in your and Aditi's life. Yes. How does it feel like to be a father, and how has it changed you as a person? I think it will change me as a person. <laughs> She's just two months old. That's too much pressure on a two-month-old baby to change me fully as a person yet. But what's happened is, uh, Aditi and I keep discussing that we didn't think that we are missing anything in life. Honestly, we decided to have a baby at like thirty-eight. Uh, we always thought that we won't have a uh, kid but now that we have her there's a new dimension that's opened up that we never knew existed so it's yeah. not as if we were missing something that there's something wrong or you know not there in life but yeah this is a whole new dimension i don't think i've wrapped my head around it as it is as we've discussed many times fathers yeah. are useless the first 6 months yeah. we tried to be useful but biologically speaking we're fairly useless yeah uh, so i think i'm still coming to terms with what this is uh, but i'm super excited about it yeah, one of my friends has t- told me that parenting re- like being a parent rather really lives up to the hype and it's just sort of the biggest growth opportunity you'll get yeah. in your life to grow as a person so i am almost i'm almost afraid uh, there's this uh, uh, gulzar quote that itna kyun sikhaye ja rahi hai zindagi humne kaun si yahan sadiyan bitani hai uh, it is you know there is already last four years have been so you know it's been 20 years packed into four yeah and now i know that this is another you know steep learning curve <laughs> yeah. coming up it's almost scary that uh, i it, i think we have the topic for the ne- next podcast <laughs> which is how to be a parent and a founder together, founder together. <laughs> so yeah. i'm going to reserve that for later and we'll dive deep into this one culture it's this big word and nobody knows what it means uh and you know you hear a couple of things culture eat strategy for breakfast yeah and uh, i thought it was very appropriate for the whole truth because yeah. one i know you put culture above strategy and eating is very important <laughs> for, for for us so i thought it was a very appropriate uh thing and i went back to trying to define culture which i know you're going to but i said how does harvard business school define culture and it was essentially a set of values beliefs or shared common understanding yeah that drives mindset actions behaviors I thought it was a good, reasonably very good MBA definition of what culture is. And I remember you. I went back to some of the emails I had written, and you had sent me a values document. Yeah. To see if our values matched, and it was called the whole truth about the whole truth. Yeah. So talk to me about how you thoughtfully you, uh, how you thought about values, why that was so important to you, and how it sort of evolved. Yeah. So I will start with focus because that's how. that we are we're doing this because we want to affect a certain change in the world 
and the capitalistic route of building a company around it is just that it's the medium to get to that result uh, and and we want to also disprove the fact that you know capitalism and doing good for the world are at loggerheads with each other capitalism is how we've as as humanity we've chosen to organize society with this method because we've tried communism we've tried socialism none, none of it works so capitalism with all its flaws this is how it is this is the best option that we have and if with that as the tool we cannot leave the world a better place than we found it then we are screwed as it is right so hence everything for us starts with purpose purpose is to rebuild the world's trust in its food that assumes that the trust was broken uh, who did, who broke it big food broke it how did they break it by telling half half truths and lies for ages and we are trying to rebuild it by telling you the whole truth about food right this is the starting point of everything including our culture and my definition of culture after many evolutions has come to be it's a healthy mix of who you are and who you wish to become yeah so and hence you know i to young founders when they meet me and they ask should we have a culture document on day one i discourage it that first spend a year year and a half discovering who you are that document needs to start from there you are a certain way you already have a certain culture you have certain values and you will be forced to discover it as a company after you start and it won't just be the founders values uh it it's a you know it's a shape shifting organism the minute you add more people yes the founder is the highest weightage in that formula but there are other people who add weightage to their founder it's, it's interesting I, i actually encourage people to put down at least the common values and especially with two or three founders it's good to put that down on paper and that at least define some of the early vocabulary mm. around hiring and it helps that conversation or especially around hiring and then we'll get into it because sometimes you say uh ye hamare jaisa banda nahi hai right Uh-huh. and uh, and so that to actually articulate that within that group the vocabulary sort of helps saying i i agree but i think you need a common pool of experiences and examples yeah, to get experience. to an yeah, to get to a articulation which is rooted in reality not your imagination because as yeah. i said many a times people define their culture too much as who they wish to be yeah. and they, it has too little of who they are and who they are reflects in their everyday actions right you spent a year you look back and see hum bolte bahut kuch hai humne kara kya humne ye kara to pehle ye likho this is who we are then there are some parts of this which we not wish to 180 degree change because you can't like if yeah. you are 35 40 you are kind of set in your ways of who you are you can exaggerate a few dial down a few uh that becomes the second part of it that we want to amplify these parts of who we are and dial down these parts of you know who we are but i think that discovery can only happen when you have shared experiences you do it early on and it's just wishful so how important is that discussion and often when you get, get into these values discussions and so on it becomes a lot of wordsmithing yeah is that wordsmithing important uh because it has a life of its own or it's not important as long as you get the general the direction right i think the i can tell you the process that worked for us it took us 3 4 months after we said let's do this which was a year into building the company and you know a 6 7 people core team was in place from day 1 and they stood you know for the first year we said now let's put down our culture on a dog and for 3 or 4 months we would meet once every week once every 2 weeks to just jam uh and that's where you know all these discussions i didn't dis- i didn't invent these words like we discussed culture hota kya hai is it who we are because we looked at some company and the words they written were bhai these are to like you know aspirational things that i don't even know whether i'll ever become this or not so so 3 4 months of a lot of you know going wide going wide going down random meandering pathways coming back etc then we had some sort of a inkling that it's these seven eight areas that we keep gravitating back to uh you know when we discuss hiring examples what were you looking for when we discuss what did you do in that situation what did you do in that situation these seven eight broad areas we are you know seeming to uh coalesce upon so for example one very early one one for us was uh do greater than say yeah uh we've always had this thing as you know what ideas are a dime a dozen the road to greatness is littered with uh 
uh, ideas that never saw light of day but you know people said big big things good idea executed well is infinitely more valuable than a great idea that never saw light of day so do greater than say was something that we always used to gravitate towards the other one because we are all a very middle class sort of uh, you know team none yeah. of us come from you know very uh, rich upbringing etc so hard work is the only hack is one of those that we were we are the kind of people who actually don't believe in hacks we don't believe ki ye shortcut hai ye main to 2 ghante mein kar dunga nikal jaunga you know the thing that we were discussing before the podcast that we come in prepped this was a common trait ki dekho we don't know we are smart or not we just prep the fuck out yeah we just put in the work yeah yeah and that's the only hack that we know to doing good yeah. work, right so these discussions happened and then in the end once i had all of these then i again told everyone you know what i think i know what we are trying to say i think i am the one who has the ability to say it best let me wordsmith uh then i wrote down in the most succinct precise concise form possible because this has to travel to 100000 yeah. employees right so uh brevity conciseness crispness matters in how you pen it down i think wordsmithing matters language matters uh but after you've done the wonder and you know i i told you i i read that values doc uh, which you sent me yeah. just, just in prep, prep for this uh, podcast it has actually stood the test of uh, of time yeah. and some of that wordsmithing is just so evocative that i immediately know that this is how it will travel in the org yeah yeah so one of the values uh, going back to this wordsmithing thing um, that i really remember from the doc is consumer is family and i really loved it at that point in time and i had, you know you hear consumer is king consumer is queen consumer is always right yeah. but he said consumer is family yeah and talk a little bit about that we'll just give people a sense of how we thought about all this sure it's one of my uh, favorite <laughs> values too because uh, when it came up for discussion you know we were like we're building a brand so we have to talk about the consumer uh and because we talk about the consumer a lot it has to be with enshrined within our values but you were like everyone says consumer is king consumer is god consumer is right there's always a feeling of hierarchy between company and consumer we and you know we want it's usually it is lip service because honestly within organizations to i'm sure everyone has had moments of bitching about the consumer yeah. right ki kuch bhi bol raha hai खुद इसने गलत एड्रेस डाला इसके पास नहीं पहुंचा तो हमारे को गाली दे रहा है और तुमने बाहर खोल के रखा पैकेट वो खराब हो गया तो मैं क्या करूं तो ऑनेस्टली तो यू डोंट थिंक कंज्यूमर इज ऑलवेज राइट या बट व्हाट डू वी डू वी एक्चुअली ट्रीट देम लाइक फैमिली एंड इन फैमिली यू डोंट अग्री टू एवरीथिंग योर मॉम सेज मोस्टली डिसएग्री हां मोस्टली डिसएग्री या और योर सिब्लिंग्स बट यू ब्रिंग देम इनटू योर हाउस sit them down for a meal have conversations agree disagree laugh cry and you know that's how you build a relationship with the consumer and we felt we don't want a, we we are not people who believe and we can't be non whole truth one of the values is the whole truth matters you cannot build a brand called the whole truth externally if you are not the whole truth internally uh, right and and by the way that value talks about how uh this is super tough because that demands a that you know the truth about yourself which is hard b you bring it to work every day and c you feel safe enough that you say it uh and trust others with it right like if you are being if whole truth matters if you being truthful then no consumer is not always right and she is not king but she is family we will bring her into our home we will sit down we will have a chat we'll have a drink we'll have a coffee we'll tell her our point of view we'll hear her point of view we'll hear her sorrows and that's how we will build this uh truth so yeah i think it's be- beautifully said both consumer is family and the whole truth matters and we'll dig into both in that in the sure. community uh part of this podcast your definition of culture and i just want to repeat it for the audience of who we are plus who we want to become uh is actually very apt because that's how we you know when i think of our values here at yeah. at matrix that's how i can actually d- divide these up uh and this balance of don't push this who we want to become so far out yeah. that it is just unattainable and it's not real and yeah. 
So jumping to how you look at new people who come, right? Yeah. How are these values used in your recruitment process? Uh, because I know they're not, you know, put in a drawer somewhere which yeah. no one looks at and it's on your wall everywhere. Yeah. Actually, again, the great thing about deriving your values after a year, year and a half, once you've discovered who you are, is as you said, they're rooted in who you are. So, it's not that you have to live, look at a values doc to remember. It gives you language, but at least for, you know, the, the top team, which still does a large part of the recruitment, I don't. I, I'm fairly proud of the fact that I actually do very little recruitment. Now, my core team does most of the recruitment. In fact, I almost make it a point to not be the one doing culture rounds. Uh, and culture rounds, part of your answer is culture rounds are our veto rounds. Uh, if And we mark skill rounds, pe we mark percentile on whether this is the 80th percentile scale, 90th. So tell me a little bit about the culture round. And you know, yeah. we find it very hard to actually have a culture round. And you know, sometimes our culture round is just meeting them in different places, coffee, drink, you know, more informal settings. Because then, you know, people can't fake it for that long and that's yeah. one way. Yeah. But our culture around is a lot of references. Mm. People that we trust, yeah. who will tell, tell us, right? like often I, I will call you and you say, and you'll say, this person is like, or nahi, ye fit nahi yeah. right? Because you know us yeah. and therefore you, you, we trust your judgment. What, what can you do in a culture around? By the way, I really respect your process. I think there's a lot to learn from that and that's a great uh, process. I think just one more thing that we do and it's again a culture thing. We've always articulated from day one and it stems from magic and logic, EQ and IQ that we've always given credence and language to emotions. So we we talk about it internally that your emotions, what you feel about something, especially if you're the top team which has been here since day zero, Matter. Does not matter if you can't articulate it. Does not matter if you can't pin See, down. What do you mean by emotion? We we we, are, we call it intuition. Ha, but okay. emotions is different. No, maybe I think intuition is the better word. Your yeah. gut feel, yeah. your uh, yeah. you know, maza nahi aara, yeah. feel nahi aari, the gut check, yeah. It matters. Yeah. Because in many places that's we've been taught to look look down upon that, right? Yeah. We've been taught to override with objectiveness yeah. and clarity and this and that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we are also one angle of uh, diversity, which is men and women. We are a very, very equally distributed org yeah. also, right? And and women have this great superpower that they intuitively give credence to intuition, Yeah. right? They don't feel ashamed about uh, being intuitive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I try and like, between me and Rachu, we try and unleash that. That yeah. you know, uh, you yeah. you say it if you're feeling that you know, yeah. sub check mark hai, lekin yeah. mana nahi aara. Yeah. And wo agar hai, yeah. to it's most probably a no. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter what happened in the yeah. uh, scale round. Is it a foolproof method? No. Yeah. But I think it avoids type one errors. Yeah. It uh, and that's the recruitment yeah. philosophy. Ki yahan pe koi uh, you know, uh, thankfully we are not in a land grab yeah. industry. Thankfully it's not, you know, yeah. abhi ek saal mein jo winner take all ho jayega, aisa yeah. nahi hai. We are, uh, and that's another, you know, constant theme in my head, which I hold against the VC world that a, all structures and conversations are built around scaling. Yeah. I think there is a nuance and difference between building and scaling. You scale mountains, you build monuments. We are building a monument, not scaling a mountain. Uh, I'm very clear about it. And hence, this is a compounding business. This yeah. is a business where, you know, if you have the 80th percentile resource, but the time function in your compounding is four years versus one year, yeah. this will perform better than the 100th percentile yeah. resource with one year of time compounding, yeah. etc. Right. So, in this context, your emotions matter. Your intuition matters. Yeah. I don't want to make a type 1 yeah. error where I bring in someone wrong just yeah. because I feel... This B2B opportunity, yeah. like we're struggling with, you know, we, we've struggled with retail for yeah. the longest time. Physical retail is tough for, we have four months of shelf life, how do you do physical retail, etc. So easy to go and get some, you know, yeah. ex-head of big company and bring yeah. him in. Uh, we've really guarded against that, that yeah. no yeah. winner take all. Nahi hai. Yeah. If you don't get the right person, the right person doing 80% of the work is better than the wrong person doing 
100 percent of the work. And go, just going back to this thing about building monuments versus creating <coughs> mountains, uh, Arjun Purkes Purki, who's on your board yeah. and a and a friend of uh, mine, he sent me uh, this. Uh, 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 I don't know who wrote it on social media, but he sent me this cost, concept of sustainable tan uh, a couple of days back. I don't know if he sent it to you. No, no, but it was, uh, you know, large CPG companies never make this mistake. They know the sustainable time will happen over 20 years and they keep investing at the rate that you're supposed to, <coughs> invest, supposed to invest. And yeah, suddenly, yeah. and you were talking about the Harpik story, yeah. suddenly it becomes this huge thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas, <coughs> uh, uh, you, you know, sometimes in the in the VC startup ecosystem, you try to outgrow the TAM by tr trying to spend too, too much and uh, getting consumers in who are not ready, right? And I think that's Absolutely. the... the Absolutely. See, I learned it uh, on Unilever's money back yeah. at HUL uh, when we were building this brand called Ayush. I spent 250 crores of the company's money to build a 100 crore brand when the best marketeers, I'm not talking yeah. about myself, my boss, my super boss, best marketeers were put on top of it. And the biggest learning was beyond a point you cannot short circuit the word of mouth process. Yeah. Uh, just because... I, I didn't buy your product when you showed me your ad three times. Why will I buy it if you show it to me ten times? Yeah. I'm waiting for someone to validate. Yeah. I'm waiting. And these are physical processes. You can't short circuit them yeah. beyond a point. Yeah. Uh, you can very well make a type 1 error of throwing all your kitty on this one great idea that you think is world changing, put yeah. IPL ad and die. Yeah. Uh, that's very possible. Yeah. It's a game of attrition. If you live yeah. for 20 years, your company will be a billion dollar company. There is yeah. Living for 20 years is the tough. Yeah bit yeah and this is like one of the folks in the road where we will go down in our normal conversation <laughs> for an hour so i'm going to bring yeah. it back to culture and you know he just uh, referenced <coughs> rachu rachu is rachna his yeah. his co-founder and responsible for i think all the products that we love from the whole truth started somewhere in rachna's kitchen somewhere yes uh, and so sh shout out to her and i love the fact that you mentioned how her intuition is just very strong yeah and because i know her she's just got such a you know easy manner I can just see people opening up to her yes. in a way that they would not normally open up to people yeah, and yeah. she would just have such a good read on people. Yeah. And we actually have people like that in the org and we often actually send them new folks mm. because I know that the candidate or sometimes even the founder will open up to them in a way that they might not open up to, to me and I think that's a great way to actually get a different read on people. Absolutely. Yeah. And her job is now to foster many such Rachnas in the yeah. org. Through this process, you still don't get foolproof answers, like you said. So, let's say you end up with two types of people. One, where performance is lower, but great culture fit. Yeah. And another person who is very high performance, but not a culture fit. How do you deal with both of these as, you know, these people sort of grow in the org? First of all, as I said, because of the way the process is, this hasn't happened much to us. Because we'd rather let go of three good candidates then get one incorrect culture fit in. So, we are too anal about it. Uh, so, So my answer is going to be largely in the hypothetical. Cases Fair enough. So, it's not as if I can say, Mainne aisa hi kiya hai har bari. But having said that, the practical answer is, if it happens, my guess is, I will I'll also be practical. I will use the performance for a bit till the time I don't believe that it's muddying the waters, that it is you know, becoming more counterproductive and that's a judgment call. Yeah. Uh, but I'd be clear in my head that this is not a long term yeah. situation because as I said, we are and this this realization I've come to after again, you know, last two years, everyone's uh, as a founder also, I, this is the first time I am on this journey, yeah. right? So I uh, hear other founders and you, you know, you keep hearing this hire the A team, hire people better than you hire someone who's seen this movie in the past, all of these words, yeah. you know, keep happening. You keep feeling talent FOMO that I think my guy is good, but how do I know what else is out there? And I can't always be on the road meeting new people all the time to figure out what else is yeah. uh, out there, right? Like you have to commit and say, yeah, I'm building this with you. And you can't live in FOMO. Ah, you can't live in FOMO, but you get this FOMO because yeah. the definition of a team again comes from the tech VC world, which is ultra alpha, uh, you know, uh, top B school, top this, ye wo karke, and yeah. nahi hai meri team. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, shit, ye to kuch hoega bahar jo nahi hai. After two, three years of, you know, grappling with this, I've come to this math that I told you. As long as I'm clear that, you know, my guy might not be 99th percentile, 
लेट से इज एटी फिफ्थ परसेंटाइल फिफ्टी परसेंटाइल की बात नहीं होती है परसेंटाइल फॉर दैट जॉब प्लीज रिप्लेस द गाय बट इफ इट्स एटी फिफ्थ बट इन द कंपाउंडिंग फॉर्मुला दिस फेलो हैज फोर ईयर्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री बिहाइंड हिम एंड इन्फिनिटी वर्थ ऑफ लॉयल्टी एंड ट्रस्ट विद हिम आई एम सिटिंग मैरिड विद दिस गाय दिस इज अ सबमरीन एंड दैट्स हाउ अगेन आई आर्टिकुलेटेड इंटरनली दिस इज अ सबमरीन वी पुल डाउन द लैच वी आर इन साइड या I am not opening the latch if you are not opening the latch. Yeah. The only thing I, I would say is, you know, we have experiences and our process has ref- gone refined over a period of time, where we have let potentially people who are cultural misfits keep going because their performance is okay and so yeah. on. And after you know they have left, uh, we have realized that the because it's a such a contact sport for us. Yeah. Right. We realize so m- in the it's impacted our org in so many different ways. That we just didn't know. I was that. going to come to that. So only. I think another thing I've gotten more confidence on. जो मैं पहले बोल नहीं पाता था because you know who am I uh, to say it? I feel there is a level of intelligence where you are super clear about first order effects. Yeah. And then there is a level of wisdom where you have a gut feel for second and third order effects. Yeah. Which you can't quantify. Yeah. Uh, a bad fit. doing great work in his or her patch yeah is simple for a first order intelligence to look yeah. at are wah kitna badhiya yeah. kar raha hai hamara ye business 2 crore ka tha itne 10 crore yeah. ka kar diya but the second third order effects of kitna friction bad gaya team mein yeah. because those effects are about what could have been yeah. that never happened which you can't quantify right like imagine if there is friction in creative teams how will you ever know what could have been created that didn't get created because yeah. two people are not talking to Yeah. Uh, each other, right? So, udar, it's a tough judgment call, but but at least having that articulation that I am not doing this for downside minimization. I am doing this for upside maximization, and for upside maximization, if I feel that potential is not getting unleashed at a collective level because of some friction, then no matter how beneficial that friction point is, it has to go. No easy answers, I think, in on either side. So one of the things that's truly distinctive about the way you've created the culture is that uh, everyone lives it. It's almost, yeah. you know, everyone's breathing it in some ways. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people know your factory is essentially run by women. Yeah. Uh, and even the women on the factory floor, I can just see that they are built. You know, there's magic and logic. They're building it with love. Yeah. Uh, how does that happen? How did you get, you know, those women in the factory to Sort of understand and live your values. I think it's not something that we very consciously did over and above whatever we were doing in the rest of the org. Uh, two things that happen on the factory floor differently. One, I think, just by being a safe, respectful workplace, you're already in the 99th percentile of factory floors for women. So many times. so many of them have come up and told me that i look forward to coming here because this is the best part of my day i am not many of them are not safe in their home many of them are not respected in their families so the the love respect friendship trust that they feel here already catapults us in the yeah into the 99th percentile on that and the second thing that i have realized always is actually we are the more complex to some extent conniving you know overthinking sort of people those folks are a actually far simpler i think in many ways they understand life better than we do uh, because they live in a resource constrained uh, environment and b you know the entire inside on which microfinance is built that trust integrity respect respect in community matters a lot more to them and they understand the value of that a lot more so unko when you say once that you know hum saaf khana bana banate hain logon ke liye लोगों के बच्चे खाते हैं खाना बिकॉज दैट्स हाउ वी ड्रोव क्वालिटी राइट वी वर नॉट फैक्ट्री पीपल वी डेंट यू नो वी वी स्ट्रगल्ड विद यू नो स्केलिंग अ फैक्ट्री फ्लोर बिकॉज आता ही नहीं है करा नहीं कभी सो आर आंसर ऑलवेज वॉज इनको भी समझाते हैं कि uh, ये क्यों कर रहे हैं बिकॉज yeah. हमारे पास सिस्टम प्रोसेस नहीं है मशीन नहीं है बट हमारे पास पर्पज है तो उनको समझाते हैं कि ये हम साफ खाना बनाते हैं लोगों के बच्चे खाएंगे लोगों के पेरेंट्स खाएंगे तो आप सोचिए ना अगर आप नेट नहीं पहनोगे बाल गिर जाएगा तो किसी के खाने में बाल आ जाएगा इज द इमोशन विद विच वी ट्राई टू यू नो हैक व्हाट वी डेंट हैव इन प्रोसेस एंड यू नो मशीनरी एक्सेट्रा एंड वंस वी डिड दैट फॉर टू इयर्स 
देन दे बिलीव डस ट्रूली कि ये तो जो बोल रहे वही है तो अभी कभी भी नाव उल्टा होता है दैट वेन दे सी प्रोसेस लैब और क्वालिटी लैब्स एक्सेट्रा दे विल कम अप इन बी लाइक ये ऐसे नहीं चल सकता लोगों के बच्चों को खाना खिलाना ये कैसे होएगा ये एक्सेट्रा सो आई थिंक दैट्स द कॉम्बिनेशन दैट्स वॉटनेस दे I keep telling you that you should have like an open factory visit that people can sign up for, and I think he'll do it at some point in time. And when he does, I encourage everyone to go to the factory because it's yeah. magical on two counts. One is the you see the, these women building these wonderful products, and then there is of course like a smell of chocolate that envelops yeah, the air, yeah. which is I think both actually add to the to the we've, experience. We've done it once or twice as a chocolate factory for visits for kids. Yeah. The problem is you have to do it on a Sunday because yeah. we are already running choked on production on all the times. Yeah. So my production team is like, please, yeah. <laughs> you don't do your show and tell here. Yeah. We have to make bars, <laughs> so, yeah. but we shall. All of this is good. You put this on paper. People are living and breathing it. But then there is business. There is yeah. performance. There are some hard decisions. And I always say, you know, your values get tested in the hardest of times. Yeah. And so you have whenever this. it's come to hard decision making time you have always gone back to the values so talk a little bit about that and i'll talk a little bit about the you know two examples one is you know more recent stopped chocolate yeah. production for for milk chocolates yeah and then you exited uh, instagram, instagram at, yeah. at at one point in time yeah so talk a little bit about the process on how you put culture at the forefront when you're making hard decisions yeah and and both of these example so i actually i think this 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 question usually not just in my context in any context it's framed in a disadvantageous way that you know because of this you have this because you put some constraints on yourself what is purpose effectively keep saying this internally that the only proof of purpose is pain if you if it's not paining you then you don't have purpose because every purpose every mission forces certain constraints on the business right and then when you are feeling the pain of the constraints you can't be like chalo this constraint ko loosen up kar dete hain right because the advantage in the business why is it that this brand grew like the way it did why is it that people are in deep love with the brand why they can't stop talking about it that's also because of the purpose right because they've seen someone take a really high ground and then stick to it for a long period of time right so actually everything that we enjoy all the word of mouth all the brand love comes from purpose and the cost of that is the pain of the constraints that come with it and hence any time that pain gets too much my instinctive reaction is i will not loosen the constraint i will tell the story right because if i am taking all of this pain the least i can do is go and tell my consumer listen there was an alternate path I could have chosen to put not cocoa in your chocolate, but dark compound. I could have chosen to put not hand pitted dates in your chocolate or in your chocolate bar, but put date syrup or date paste. I would even get to call it dates uh, according to FSCI rules. I could call it dates, but date syrup and dates are completely different things. I will not loosen that constraint. I am taking a lot of pain for it. Least I can do is come and tell you the story. uh right and then hope that you will value uh what you're getting and pay the price for that yeah uh, for that value so i don't look at it in a uh, you know many a times team also has ab nahi hota shuru mein hota tha has a very we start feeling sorry for ourselves uh that you know hamara uh hum jo pain lete hain wo dusron ko to lena nahi padta uh you know it's almost like competing with your hands tied behind your back your competition has this is true right like my the biggest protein bar player in the country which soon will be us but till now uh has 12 months of shelf life i have 4 months of shelf life uh, and hence they have 2% returns from trade i have 20% returns from trade because how will i predict demand to this level right like ek mahina to banane mein lag jata hai ek mahine pehle wo wapas kar deta it gets one and a half shelves uh, months on shelf every day we we'll live with the decision that if i put one drop of preservative in this bar i will go from 4 month to 12 month returns will go from 20% to 2% every day i live with this decision that can be made today i am not sorry i am not saying ki mere liye taras khao ki dekho main ye kar raha hu ya mujhe you know bahut high pedestal rakho i am just saying i am going to tell you the 
story and I know that this is why you love the brand. So there is more advantage to this than disadvantage. Yeah. So uh, last topic for uh, this discussion which is culture versus cult mm. and it seems like you have a great culture. How do you avoid it being a cult and cult I am going to define as being too person centric, person -centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it is uh, you know one way which goes through founder or small group of people yeah. versus being owned by the team yeah. and you said uh, something interesting to me that day that if I say this everybody else will reject uh, this idea yeah. saying you don't understand our culture yeah. uh, and so I know you have actually figured out culture versus cult. Yeah. Talk about that journey. So this I was very conscious of from day one and again contrary to popular belief I didn't start the brand thinking I'll be face of the brand that I will you know do all the advertising also and all of that stuff. Uh, I actually love my own private time and this takes away all of that. I actually uh, you know take a lot of stress before I go on stage. Uh, I, yeah. I have to prep a lot all of that stuff. Yeah. So I was very conscious of this is the downside of me becoming the center of this that then there is a single point of failure uh, in any central system and you know not just it becoming a cult what if my values get corrupted right like there are in all honesty what I used to think was a surety 10 years ago I think the exact opposite today so I change right like and I think that's a good thing human beings should evolve and change in certain ways but then but that also leaves the door open for me my values and my incentives getting corrupted 10 years or 20 years down the line because I can't predict it I have changed in the past so this has to be the the value system has to be decentralized and decentralization actually happens on two axes the first axis is in the name I have called myself the whole truth and I've put it consumer facing so from day zero consumers are the custodians of our conscience and now first of all the consumers stand up in uh, battle if we do something which is off chhotu sa thing which is off brand the consumers will stand up in oh that ye to, this is not uh, whole truth the and yeah. like we have a uh, live example not live thode time pehle ka example humne when we made our muesli usse pehle we used to put only dates in our products muesli is the first product in which we put kakwi which is uh, you know a even more nutritious form of jaggery liquid jaggery but yes it is true that it's not as you know low GI and nutritious as dates uh, consumers called us out that uh, you used to say that dates are you know sugar is sugar honey jaggery uh, refined sugar we had an article on it on fit sheet I had an article that honey versus jaggery versus sugar and all of them are macronutritionally the same micronutritionally little difference is there they called us out. I had to go full explain uh, why I chose uh, Kakwi etc. Because consumers are like this is the standard we hold you to. So that's one. And the other is internally again. If what I try and do many a times is I don't hide. Uh, I try at least. I don't hide my incapabilities and my uh, shortcomings. Uh, failing publicly within the team uh, gives them the confidence that this fellow is also mortal. Uh, and they get the confidence to then, you know, they don't hold you to such a high pedestal ki if Shashank is saying something which is off brand or off culture, uh, he must be right. Uh, because I have been wrong uh, publicly in front of them in the past. And I think the third thing which has happened well for us is because again team, this is all compounding, compounding happens in so many ways, right? Like because team has been there for four years like they know me inside out we have such a strong bond we we are in each other's homes all the time etc that there is this comfort level of yeah. talking back to me and speaking up to me truth to power happens uh, all the while uh, I think these are the three ways in which I feel and this is not something which is a done deal right like you have to work on this and make sure that this continues uh, forever but for now I think ye teen se, uh, this fear that and this was articulated by Sriram to me that I think now in this company if you tomorrow come and say that ye ek preservative dal dete hai, isse shelf life 12 mahine ho jayegi, toh people will revolt they will first tell you that you are stupid that this should not be done you lost your marbles Haan. and if you don't agree they will quit he's like I will quit 
So I know, and I know four other That's people fantastic. Who, will, who will do it. Yeah. You know, I, I love our conversation because I always take back like these small nuggets, and then I often go repeat it to my family. But this. <laughs> Purpose is always linked to pain yeah. and consumers as conscience keepers is just going to stick with me from this conversation. Uh, I think one of the things that's so, sort of likely obvious to everyone is that you just wear this, you know, uh, the whole truth and being the uh, being the whole truth in yeah. some way. You just wear it with humility and wear it to these and I think that's the thing that really sets you apart. Uh, thank you for this chat. I, I think it was a phenomenally candid chat and uh, I learned a lot. Uh, I'm even more excited about the next spot that we're doing just after this, uh, which is how to build communities. Yeah. Um, and so looking forward to that. Thank you so much for having me. And I applaud the fact that you went back and read the uh, note, the culture note before you uh, came in. And I do want to end at this that, you know, we've always, you know this now because you've been here since pre-seed and, you know, we are now friends that even with investors, we've always first aligned on the why before we've aligned on the what or the how yeah. uh, because just like we spoke of team we spoke of customers but investors are big stakeholders in this game also yeah. and I am playing this game for life yeah. don't want anyone who's not right. you know aligned so and there's no one who's more aligned than you are that's why I yeah. think we love thank jamming so thank you so much for thank you and I'll that. tell you, any investor who wants to invest in the whole truth you will get a pre-read yeah. which is the whole truth <laughs> about the whole truth and you'll have to actually pass his values test so thank awesome. you thank you